what's going on everybody so welcome back to another video and today's video is going to be completely off the cuff unscripted just and if i ramble on please bear with me so i wanted uh to do this video for a couple reasons one uh i'm reformulating uh an older fragrance of mine that i made a year ago and i wanted to walk you through currently where it's at um ran into a couple troublesome spots which i'll talk you through uh, but then i also kind of wanted to make a few points while i made this video about uh, one the power of percent or percentage um, a lot of people underestimate the power of a a fraction of a percent of a certain material can do in your blend and i'll i'll talk about that a little bit more later but the power of percent is so important uh, especially if you are dealing with high odor strength materials like if you use something and it's off by like maybe 0.5 percent that could throw off the entire blend completely and it just boggles my mind that the power of, of uh, a, a fraction of a percent is so important um, another point that i wanted to bring up before we start going through all these things and i start you know formulating uh, is when you're making trial blends and trial batches um let me just put that in there real quick it's always important to make minor changes because usually when you are blending trial batches you're going to go through maybe 10 15 20 different trial batches but every time you do a another version try to limit the amount of changes uh, mostly because if you change too much from one version to the next and if that next new version goes you know astray and it goes wrong it's harder to pinpoint exactly what went wrong if you change too many things and a perfect example would be let's say you've got a formulation and you think it smells great but it's lacking something so you go back into your formulation you make another version and you amplify one ingredient by like say one percent you lower the musk by let's say two percent and then you add in an additional new ingredient even though if it's low like 0.5 percent that's three different variables you changed now when you blend it you're done you let it settle for 24 hours you smell it and you're like oh it, it it just doesn't smell right something's off but now you don't know what it is it could be any one of those three changes or it could be the combination of all three changes so my advice is yes you will be going through multiple trial batches you know batch after batch after batch if you're not doing at least 20 trial batches you're probably not doing it enough i've gone through 20 30 even up to 50 trial batches before i was completely satisfied with the finished perfume but as you're making these trial batches keep your changes from you know from batch to batch to a minimum so if something didn't work you know exactly what it was that didn't work uh, rather than trying to figure everything out from scratch again and just you know it's just you're wasting your time so i am going to go through and formulate this really quick just to give you a a, a brief update this is a woman's fragrance uh, it's something i made a year ago that was geared for the scent of valentine's day so it's gonna have a lot of rose some chocolates some sandalwoods um i made like a, a champagne kind of accord top note there's going to be some sweet you know fruity nuances in it so the original version that i made a year ago it wasn't bad at all but now that i smell it a year later i just pulled it off my shelf and i sprayed it on i was like man you know it's like it's just too thick it's too cloying you know if I just would tweak this and tweak that, it would come out better, or maybe if I did this. So my brain started going and I was like, well, let me reformulate it and see what happens. So I'm, I'm starting to do that. I still kept the original formula, of course, because it's fine. I, I like it. It's just, I want to try and take it and see if I can improve on it. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. So we're going to do that. So while I'm going through this, bear with me. If you see me jump off camera, sometimes I've got behind me my computer that's got my formula. So as I'm adding things, I'm gonna adjust the formula uh, and make notes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start going through and just start adding things. I'll tell you what I'm adding, what the, uh, 
the percent or what, uh, how much of the amount is in the formula. Uh, a lot of these materials are pre-diluted. Some of them are heavily pre-diluted. I'm not gonna bother telling you how much they're pre-diluted. Don't sit there and count the number of drops or ask me, you know, how many grams did you add of that? Just go, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I added one part per thousand of this, seven parts per thousand of that. It's a formula. You, it doesn't matter if I tell you the dilution ratio or the weight, just this is the raw formula. The formula that I'm going to be telling you is that ingredient's counterparts in its raw format. Even though I'm using pre-diluted, I'll still tell you what it would equate to if you used it raw. So just to keep it simple for everybody. So let's get rolling. So I start from base and go up to the top. Um, I usually start with my musks first. So this one here is a musk blend and I have to just check and see how many I've got here. Okay, so this musk blend is one of my own blends that I did. It's a combination of galaxolide, edenolide, exaltolide total, and a little bit of musk ketone. So you won't be able to replicate this, but if you were trying to do this at home, just, just do equal parts, you know, let's say 50-50 galaxolide and edenolide, it'll get you pretty close. So we're just gonna go, boom, like so. And this video will probably be a 20 to 30 minute long video because I'll be talking and doing all this and moving back and forth, updating my spreadsheet. So if you don't mind the long video, that's cool. If you do mind the long video, see ya. Tear that out. So the next musk I'm now adding the funny thing is, is the original formula that I did a year ago did not have a lot of musks. It only had like maybe 5% musks. So I wanted to redo this blend and, and add a, a, a lot more musks. I'll be more than doubling the amount. So for those watching this, the musk blend that I just put in there is, in its raw format is 76 parts per thousand. Now this I'm adding now is another musk, it's called Aura Touch. It's, I believe it's made by Ferminich and it's a blend of like Habanolide, Exaltolide and a whole bunch of other things. And for me, Aura Touch is one of those musks that I can easily smell because a lot of musks I can't really smell. Uh, like especially my musk blend, it's very, very faint but if you add a lot of it, it's a very floral, powdery, clean musk. And for me, Aura Touch, what I'm adding now, uh, is very detectable and it's a little bit more on the warmer side, so it complements the two. So that one, actually, I only put in two. Let me put in one more. That was not what I wanted. One more, one more. There we go. That's what I wanted. So Aura Touch musk, we're looking at 69 parts per thousand in the formula. Okay, that's it for the musks. Now we are going to go with good old ethyl vanillin. And in this formula that I'm doing now, I'm actually using this quite high. Uh, which for me, I'm shocked that I am, but for some reason it's working because the amount of other base notes, uh, heavier materials that we're going to be using kind of overshadow the ethyl vanillin. Uh, so it seems to work pretty well in this amount that I'm doing now. And that, let me just update this. So ethyl vanillin is at eight parts per thousand, which in my opinion is quite high. Um, unless you're going for an actual, like a vanilla type of fragrance, but I'm not. But for some reason that amount works well with all the other things that I'm working with because they kind of overshadow it and it just adds a little bit of sweetness. Next, we're gonna do some ethyl malto. Uh, this one I've got, pre-diluted very heavily to like 0.5%. 
And I do that because I want to keep this very low in the formula. It's at, hold on one second. Ethyl maltol is at one part per thousand in this formula. And that's, I do that because to my nose, I can easily smell ethyl maltol a mile away in any fragrance that I've ever smelled. If I'm at a, a department store smelling things, um, whatever, the minute I smell it, if there's ethyl maltol in it, I can be like, yep, they're using ethyl maltol. And it's, my nose picks up so easily. And if you use too much of it, I can't stand it. But in small amounts, it does the trick. Uh, the next one we're gonna do, this is a sandalwood accord. And this one is a pre-made accord that I did. It's got like maybe six or seven materials in it. It's a combination of like ebonol, javanol, uh, sand, you know, sandal something or other, some sandalwood olefact. There's just a whole bunch of things in it. And that is at 23 parts per thousand. Now this next one was a new material that I started playing with and it works pretty good. Ah, oh, it smells so good. Now this is something you can pick up at a Perfumer Supply House and they make a Ombre 83 base, uh, which originally was made in the early 1900s by Delaire and somebody found the formula and decided to redo the base and, and remake it and essentially all it is is it's a deep resinous kind of base that's based on labdanum, benzoin, a little bit of rose, a little bit of bergamot, and it smells so lovely. And I'm just putting it in very small amounts because it helps warm up the base in a nice way, in my opinion. And the fact that there is a little bit of rose and bergamot in this base already, because I'm using rose and bergamot as we get further down the line, it just complements everything so well. So with that, let me just update this. Whoops, too much. So with the Ombre 83 base, we are at 29 parts per thousand. Uh, now we're gonna go with a little bit of civet. Uh, this is a, a synthetic civet. Uh, I forget who does it, maybe if it was a Ferminich or um, Givaudan, I forget, but they make a civet synthetic. And quite honestly, it smells like shit. <laughs> Not gonna lie, literally smells like shit. Uh, but, I have it pre-diluted down to 0.5% so I can accurate, accurately dose it really, really low. Um, and you have to, because if you use too much, your fragrance smells like shit. Uh, but in small amounts, it does add this kind of dark warmth, kind of something to the base that it's, it's hard to describe, but I really, really like it. And so with this, let me just update this. We are at uh, one part per thousand. And now we're going to move on to good old Fixidur 505E. Let me see where I'm at with this. And this is just another kind of, I'd hate to say generic ambergris, but it has ambergris like qualities but there's a lot more going on than just ambergris but it does have this kind of blue kind of ambergris semi-sweet uh fixative effect in there and it's kind of nice so i have it in here let me just update this now that i added that and i've got it a little on the high side for my taste i've got it at five parts per thousand but it seems to work well uh based on the trial batch that I've done prior to this, around that ratio, usually Fixidor 505E, I tend to keep at just one to maybe two parts per thousand in a formula max. But in here, I've got it at five parts per thousand and it does pretty good. It's doing some nice effects and it's not overpowering or overshadowing anything. It's just kind of subtly there. Uh, next, 
This is good old tonka bean, which you could subs uh, substitute with just kumarin if you have kumarin. And you'll, you'll notice a lot of these small, like little plastic vials. No, I do not store materials in these little vials. These are temporary storage for like, if I'm pre-diluting something on the fly, instead of, you know, making a whole nother bottle of it, I can just use these little guys and just pre-dilute a small amount that I can have in here for maybe a week or two while I use it. And then after that, you know, I'll just throw it away because it's just, you know, it's a, enough to hold like maybe 20, 25 drops and that's it. Because I'm just using it for this uh, session or maybe the next, you know, four or five sessions. So Tonka, 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 Tonka is a favorite ingredient of mine, but... Hold on, let me just update that. If you use too much, it, it'll get away from you. It gets, it gets out of control really fast. So in this formula, I've got Tonka, which again, you can substitute for Kumarin. Uh, it's at 13 parts per thousand. If you're using Kumarin, uh, probably stick around 10 parts per thousand. Don't go any higher than that because it's just... It gets too gourmandish and too dark, in my opinion. All right, so that was pretty much it for all the base. Uh, there's some other materials that are going to be long lasting, but I'm kind of considering them as middle notes. So got to go with good old Izoe Super. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. I'm not done with the base. Duh. I skipped. I skipped. Okay, so the next material, da, 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 isobutavan, which is another vanillin-like material. Uh, it's a little bit more creamier than like say vanillin or ethyl vanillin. Uh, it has like a kind of, some people say cream soda vibe. Uh, I get that a little bit, but to me, isobutavan is a little bit more creamy, like melted white chocolate is the best way to describe it. So piggybacking this with ethyl vanillin just kind of solidifies that sweetness that I'm looking for in the base. And again, because this is a Valentine's Day themed fragrance, I need some sweetness in the base to go with the, you know, those rich chocolates and vanillas and things like that. And so isobutavan in this formula is at nine parts per thousand. Again, uh, that's a little higher than I like, uh, typically, but in this formula, because I want this formula to be sweet, uh, it, that ratio works well. Usually isobutavan, I tend to keep at three to four parts per thousand, but in this formula, it's at nine parts per thousand. Uh, next up is one that I almost didn't put in, but I tested it and tried it and it seems to work okay. And that's it, just regular old beeswax absolute. And I've got it pre-diluted pretty heavily down to 0.5%. Because if I use too much of it, it really stinks up the perfume. Because you get more, when people think beeswax absolute, they think, you know, honey and stuff like that. And no. Beeswax wax Absolute is a lot more than just honey, in my opinion. Let me just update this. Ah, come on. So Beeswax Absolute has a definite dirty grittiness to it. So yes, you do get this semi-sweet honeyness to it, but you get a lot of dirty, almost tobacco-like qualities with it as well. Um, so it has some sweetness, which I do like, and it has a little bit of dirtiness, which I do like. It, it does add something to the base that I'm kind of liking. So with Beeswax Absolute, I'm keeping it at one part per thousand in this formula. And now we've got, uh, I believe this is made by Furminich and it's called Pretty Oud. Uh, it's a synthetic oud base. And 
truth be told, there's nothing pretty about it. It's pretty stinky in my opinion. Uh, but then again, oud is kind of like a stinky wood. So with all the different sweet uh, and dark things we're putting into the base and all the musts that we're doing, I did want to dirty up the sandalwood that we added er earlier, just a hair. Um, so with pretty oud, let me just update this. I'm keeping it at six parts per thousand. Um, usually around five to six parts per thousand is where you want to keep pretty oud in a formula if you want it subtly there. Um, if you're making an actual like oud fragrance, you can probably amp it up to 10 parts per thousand. Um, but in this one, I don't want it to overpower anything. I don't want this to be an oud fragrance, but I do want a little bit of dirt to go with that sandalwood. So pretty oud um, is kind of helping in that sense. So again, pretty oud is at six parts per thousand. Now we can move on to the middle notes. Um, and we're going back here, ISOE Super. Always, always, always have ISOE Super in my blends, whether if it's in low amounts, you know, or whatever, I always have it. I'm always reaching for it. It's just one of my go-tos. So, ISOE Super, I'm not going to tell you what it is or what it does. If you're watching this video, uh, you already know what ISOE Super does. And let me update this. I've got it pretty high. Uh, it's almost at 19% in this formula, which equates to about 190 parts per thousand. Next, we're going to go with good old Hedione. Got to have some Hedione. And where are we at with this one? All right, so we go one, two. And if, again, same like I said with ISOE Super, for anyone watching this channel, you already know what Hedione is, what it does, how important and valuable it is. Let me just update this, and it's already good. So this is also at 19% in the formula, which is about 190 parts per thousand. So Isoe Super and Hedione, quite high in this formula, 19% for both. And now we're going to add in a, a violety, powdery, floral substance. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Isoe Isoraldine 95, you can get it in uh, 75, 95. Some people, you know, can reach for ionone beta, you know, some sort of ionones, like for a violety like a, a effect. Um, in this one, I'm doing the Iso, Jesus, I can't even talk. Isoraldine 95. And I'm keeping it low in this formula because this particular substance of all the ionones in my nose its odor strength is a hell of a lot stronger than all the ionones for some reason this one's strong to my nose anyways uh, let me just update this so we're at 24 parts per thousand with that material now we're going to add in so you're probably noticing that I'm jumping around from different materials. I'm not grouping florals together. It's just my materials are randomly laid out. So I'm sorry if we jump from one floral to something different to a different floral to something else. So anyways, the next material is going to be a basic cinnamon accord, uh, which is nothing more than cinnamic aldehyde <coughs> and uh, cinnamon leaf. Uh, essential oil and they're basically both at a ratio at like 50 50 because I like you know when I use one or the other I usually find that I'm using them both in equal amount so I have a bottle of it equally 50 50 you know blended in here so I can add it in 
and just not have to waste two droppers. So with this, We are at five parts per thousand. So if you're doing this uh, with separate materials, you'll probably do 2.5 parts of cinnamon leaf and 2.5 parts per thousand of uh, cinnamic aldehyde. But combined with this material, it's five parts per thousand. On to the next material. Now this next one is important. This is the... Uh, it's a chocolate accord that I made and it's kind of generic. It doesn't lean necessarily towards milk chocolate. It doesn't lean necessarily towards dark. It's kind of right in the middle and I forget off the top of my head, but it's a very simple accord that's like three or four materials. I know Chocovan is a heavy hitter in this and then I have some sort of cocoa essence or something from Robert Tett that's in this. It's some a bunch of different things, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but this is my chocolate accord. And because this is a Valentine's inspired, let me just make sure I don't add too much. Uh, Valentine's Day inspired formula, it's gonna be heavy on chocolate definitely heavy on chocolate because I want it to be a very prominent note. So when you're smelling this, the two things that you smell the most of is going to be rose and chocolate and then a bunch of other things surrounding it. So with the chocolate accord, let me just update this. It's quite high. It's a little above 4% in the overall formula, which is exactly 43 parts per thousand in this formula. All right, so next on the list, uh, we're gonna go to some, some of the rose materials, not all of them, because they're kind of all over the place. Um, usually when I go for a rose material, like Rose Jivco by Jivodan, it just seems to work for me, um, if you want a very generic rose, like when I mean generic, I mean it's pretty generic, but it works. It's a realistic smelling rose, but it's very generic in my opinion, but it does work. So with this, but I will tell you this, Rose Jivco, oh shit, <laughs> Rose Jivco, is very strong. I'm gonna have to get new droppers because I don't know which ones went with what. All right, so Rose Jivco is at 26 parts per thousand, which again, for me, it's pretty high, but like I said, this is a chocolate and rose themed fragrance. So we're gonna have the rose materials a little bit higher than normal. Uh, let's see, next on the list is called Berry Floor. And this is so transparent, it's ungodly transparent to me. Like when you smell it from the bottle, you're like, you can barely smell anything. It's like trying to smell Galaxolide in my opinion. But it does have this berry-like nuance to it and when you put it in a formula, you kind of have to dose it a little bit high just to get the, the scent or the effect. But I do like it in this blend because I do want that berry aspect or that fruity sweet aspect from this. So the floral berry sweetness from Berry Floor is helping in my opinion. So with this one, We are at 47 parts per thousand. Next on the list is Plumeria. Uh, some people, um, what's another word for uh, Plumeria? I forget, Fragipani. Fragipani, Plumeria, same thing, potato, potato. Uh, this one actually is sold 
from Perfumer Supply House, and it's made by Paul Killer. And it smells pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty dead on rendition of a plumeria flower. It's got this nice semi-sweet kind of narcotic, little bit spicy, but it, it's when you smell it, it's like, yeah, that's, that's plumeria all right. And he did a really good job on making this. So I am using a little bit of this in this blend because I like the semi-sweet and the slightly spicy narcotic that you get from it in this blend. It seems to balance a lot of the other materials out that are too clean smelling. And this one is at 32 parts per thousand. Make sure I got that right. Yep. Okay. Next on the list, we're going to add some fruits, some dried fruits. And this one is, I forget who makes it. Maybe it's Jivodem, maybe it's Furminich. I, I, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but it's called Fruit Sec. And it is a base, a synthetic base. And it just basically smells like dried fruits. Fruit Sec. And I'm always considering adding more of this because I really like the way this smells, but I am not. And in this one, we are at 23 parts per thousand. Okay, next on the list, Damascone Beta. This is to help support the rosy aspects of the rose note in here. And this is a super, super diffusive, strong material. I've got it pre-diluted down to 1%. And if I have any sort of rose note in a fragrance, I'm always, always reaching for a Damascone, whether if it's Alpha, Beta, Delta, whichever. And in this formula, we are at two parts per thousand. Uh, so, but the thing is though, you gotta watch out your ratios with Damascones because the IFRA restrictions on this, you can't go over 0.04%, I believe, or something like that in the finished, you know, finished product after you dilute everything in alcohol and it's, you know, nightly, nicely packaged. But if you stick around, you know, two parts per thousand, you, that's a good safe zone, but you tend to not want to go any higher than that, in my opinion. Next on the list, we're gonna add something a little, to, to kind of green it up a little bit, but not too much. And this is your Cis-3 Hexanol Salicylate. And forgive my brutal pronunciations on some of these things, but whatever. And I did want to add just a touch of green in this fragrance, but not too much green because it's supposed to be a sweet, flo uh, sweet floral fragrance. Uh, so the Cis3 Hexano Salicylate, we are at 13 parts per thousand. Next on the list, Floral Hydral. Super, super, super strong material. This is a Lily of the Valley uh, uh, Mugwe, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, we'll just say Lily of the Valley material. And you got to dose it low. I've got it pre-diluted down to 1%. And if you use it more than, let's say, like two parts per thousand in a formula, it's like, whoa, it gets super, super uh, fresh smelling. Like, Florhydro to me is so fresh. And in, in this formula, we are at exactly two parts per thousand and I won't take it any higher than that because when I do, it just overruns everything in the blend. It just completely takes over and it's just crazy. Let's see what else we got on the list here. Okay, another rose material. Did I skip one? 
I did skip one. I skipped one. Sorry. Uh, two more rose materials. Uh, we are going to add Rose Absolute. And this one is from Morocco. And it's not bad. It's a good generic Rose Absolute, but it complements the, the Rose Jivco. So com combining natural with synth uh, synthetics. And Rose Absolute, I've got dosed at five parts per thousand. Uh, so that's about average when people are using like absolutes. They tend not to go too crazy with uh, naturals because they're so goddamn expensive. So by adding it in, uh, Rose Absolute's actually really strong too. So you, you pre-dilute it pretty low. Uh, so five parts per thousand in this formula. And then the next or the last rose material is uh, this one is from IFF and it's called Rose Ultimate Extract. And the funny thing is, is with this material, it is a natural, but it's not necessarily an absolute. It's all of the discarded unused materials uh, when they're making Rose Absolute. Instead of throwing it away, they take all these discarded unused materials and they make an extract from it. So yes, it is, it is uh, rosy smelling, but it is a very dirty smelling rose because there's a lot more than just rose in this. There's just a, not to say that it's garbage, but there's a lot going on with Rose Ultimate Extract. And it smells nice though, because it is a rosy material, but it's a very dirty tobacco. It's almost 50-50 rose and tobacco in my opinion. It's that dirty. <coughs> so with this one, we are gonna be uh, roughly at almost the same dosage as uh, Rose Absolute. So it's at six parts per thousand. All right, so that's it for the rosy materials. Da, da, da. On to some of the, the top notes. Top notes. Uh, I pre-made this, what I'm calling a champagne accord. I tried to, my best to make a very basic generic note that kind of was reminiscent of champagne because I thought that would fit the theme of Valentine's Day because, you know, you celebrate, you're drinking, you know, wine or champagne or something like that. So with this one, what it is, well, let me just dose this bad boy real quick. It's a combination of pink pepper, white grapefruit. Uh, I forget which aldehyde, but something, one of the aldehydes, it could be like a, maybe C10 or something like that. One of the citrus aldehydes and then just a small smidge of methyl anthrolate to give it like a grapey nuance because you know wine is made from grapes. So pink pepper, white grapefruit, a touch of methyl anthrolate and you mix them up. I forget what the ratios are, but it's, it's primarily uh, uh, pink pepper and grapefruit is gonna be the bulk of this. Um, when you combine them, it's got this nose tickling sensation like this fizzy bubbly nose tick like almost when you smell champagne you get this the, the fizz in your nose and it's bright and it's just sparkling that's what this does for me so i kind of made that as a champagne accord and in this formula it is at 24 parts per thousand let's see on to Aldehyde C11, probably the most common used aldehyde out there. Very fresh, kind of rosy floral kind of aldehyde. Um, so it fits the theme and this is the one that I'm going for. I've got it pre-diluted real low, like at 0.5%. So with this, it the formula calls for, well, the C11 aldehyde is at one part per thousand. Uh, anything aldehyde, whether if it's C10, C12, C11, anything aldehyde, 
I usually never go over one part per thousand of aldehydes combined at all, but since this is the only aldehyde that I'm using, one part per thousand seems to work. Uh, if I'm using multiple different aldehydes to do different effects, I'll usually dose it even lower so when the combined of all the aldehydes combined together will be one part per thousand. But I'll never go over one part per thousand with aldehydes. It just gets out of control for me. Let's see. Next up, floral ozone. And in a sense, I don't want to say that this is an aldehyde because it's not but it has clean aldehyde-like effects. But it's definitely a floral, almost lily of the valley material, but it's very airy, very ozonic, but it's very strong. So you do have to pre-dilute the heck out of this. And in this formula, I've got it at eight parts per thousand, which is a little bit on the high side for me. Um, I probably, after this video, will do another trial blend with it, half of that amount, but the past five or six trials that I've been doing at that, uh, that ratio seems to work and it's not overpowering and it does open up, uh, the overall top end. So when you smell it, it's just like it's airy and yet still floral and it just, it kind of works that way. Uh, next up. Raspberry Accord, and this is nothing more than it's a pre blended accord. I think I, I've got Raspberry Natural from Rubber Tet, um, Raspberry Ketone Crystals, and something else all mixed together, which came up to like a pretty convincing raspberry note for you know, in my opinion, at least a long lasting raspberry note. So, in this raspberry accord that I'm putting in is quite high though. It's at 23 parts per thousand. And the reason I'm doing that though is because in the top end, the top notes, uh, when you first smell it, I want to get that blast of champagne, but also kind of mimic the feel of like, sometimes when people have a glass of champagne, they'll drop like a, a strawberry in it or they'll drop a raspberry in it. I wanted to give it that kind of feel. So it's like a bubbly champagne with a hint of uh, raspberry floating in it. And the next one, aldehyde C16 strawberry, uh, so-called aldehyde. And this guy in the formula is at one parts per thousand. Now I know you're probably thinking, wait a second, BK. You said you never go over one part per thousand with combined aldehydes, and that's an aldehyde, and C11's an aldehyde, yes. But to me, C16 is not a true aldehyde. That's why they call it so-called aldehyde. They market it as an aldehyde, but it's not really an aldehyde. It has aldehyde-like effects in a sense where the shit is hella strong, and you have to pre-dilute the living crap out of it. But to me, aldehyde, like uh, there's C16 strawberry, I think there's C14 peach, and there's 18 coconut. Those three aldehydes are not as strong or nearly as strong as the other aldehydes like your C10, C11, C12s. So I can add a little bit of that and not essentially shit my pants, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so next, we are gonna add a little bit of cardamom. And this is just your run-of-the-mill cardamom essential oil. I like what it does on the top end. It gives it like a nice fresh spicy kind of vibe. So cardamom, we are at seven parts per thousand. Um, usually that's probably a little higher than I normally like for at least for this, uh, but it seems to work well in this fragrance, but usually with cardamom, I like to hover around five parts per thousand and this one, it's at seven parts per thousand potato, potato, close enough. Uh, next up violet leaf absolute. This is hella strong. Uh, you need to pre dilute the living crap out of violet leaf absolute. And it is fresh, fresh, 
fresh. Like if you want green, like green leafy, fresh green leafy, Violet Leaf Absolute, when it's pre-diluted down to like 1%, just a drop or two, whew, it does, it just, it does the job. And I love it. So it adds, hold on one second. It adds a nice freshness to it, uh, a green freshness, but not a grassy freshness. It's like this nice wet green leaf. Um, so I've got it at three parts per thousand in this formula. <clears throat> now we're gonna go with good old bergamot essential oil. You have to be careful with dosing bergamot because there are IFRA restrictions. Uh, but if you get the, you know, the rectified versions, bergamot oil uh, rectified, you can be a little bit more lenient on your dosing, but still be wary there are IFRA restrictions on that. So with bergamot, <clears throat> We are at 60 parts per thousand. So that's roughly 6% of bergamot. Oops, let me go back up and fix that. Almost done, almost done. Uh, let's see, now we are gonna add in a little bit of neroli. And I need to get some new pipettes here. And this is not a Neroli essential oil. It's not Neroli Absolute because that is ungodly expensive. This is a synthetic uh, rendition of Neroli. It's just my own basic Neroli Accord. And for those who want to make their own Neroli Accord such as this, uh, Jamie Freider, uh, another online perfumer, if you go, I think it's jfreider.com, and you subscribe to his Patreon, and he gives you access to all these great uh, formulas, in which one of them was this Neroli Accord that he made, and I like it. It does so good for what it does. It's fresh. It's got enough bite and snap to it. And for a top note, um, it's, it's, it's got this bright, fresh, snappy, linalol-like, slightly orangey vibe. And it, it just lifts the, the overall fragrance top end so much for me, even if you do it in small doses. So I've got it at 23 parts per thousand, which is roughly like 2.3% in the formula. And it just, it works. I like it. Like in this blend, it just, it, it helps transition from champagne, raspberry, cardamom, and all these other things into, you know, a, a floral, which is the neroli, which then goes into the rose, which is the heart of the fragrance. So it's a good transitional, uh, fresh smelling floral. Now we were going to do some good old pink pepper. And again, this is one of those uh, essential oils, uh, one of these natural essential oils that is just so freaking strong. Like pink pepper oil is so freaking strong. And I've got this one. So let me make sure I've got my, yep. I've got it at five parts per thousand in this formula and to be honest, I don't like to go any higher than five parts per thousand of pink pepper in anything that I'm working on because it is just that strong. It is so piercingly strong. You just gotta watch out for it. Uh, the last material, I swear to God, it's the last one. Last, last, last one. This video is running super, super long. Um, so this is bitter almond essential oil, which is really, really high in benzyl aldehyde. And this scent is kind of like a, even though it says bitter almond, it's not necessarily almond smelling. It is nutty, but it's very cherry nuance, almost like a cherry pit. Like after you've eaten the cherry and you're left with a little cherry pit, 
and you smell the pit, that's what bitter almond oil smells like. But it does have this nice um, sweetness from the cherry, but just a, a slight, slight nuttiness to it. And it seems to work well, but the, the evaporation on benzoyl aldehyde or bitter almond oil is so quick. It's like you'll, you'll smell it in the first 10 minutes of the fragrance and then it's gone. So that's what I'm using the sole purpose of this fragrance is just to use it in a small amount. And because I want the initial opening just to be this quick flash of just a hint of that cherry kind of nuttiness. And then I want it to be gone because I want all the other things to kind of come into play real quick. And that is at two parts per thousand. So two parts per thousand for bitter almond oil, super low. It's there for effect more than it is smell. And last but not least, I top it off with some good old perfumers alcohol here, SDA 40B. We're gonna drop this down to roughly a 10% concentration, so like a, an EDT. And that's it, this is, all I, this is all I made. It's just a small little sample. And I'm, I've got my notes, so I know exactly what I changed. So to give you an idea of what this smells like versus the last batch and what made the, the prior batches so bad. So the first few renditions that I did on this remake were too clean and too, almost too clean, too powdery. Uh, so that's when I, I went and switched up the must a little bit and modified a couple other things. And then I was starting to get there. And then the last batch, or the second to the last batch was quote unquote from my girlfriend. It smelled like you were walking into the Bellagio Hotel on the Vegas Strip walked into the bathroom and you just smell all the clean soaps in the room. Like they just cleaned the bathroom and you're just getting all the soaps and the lotion smells. So it was fresh. It was that fresh. So the last one I did after that, I modified, <coughs> added in some Rose Ultimate because it has that uh, dirty tobacco nuance. I lowered the must a little bit and I think I upped the pretty oud. And I, I, I had her smell that sample. And she said, now it smells like I'm walking into the Bellagio Hotel bathroom after somebody's been smoking a cigarette in there. So it was still clean, but it was just too dirty for her now. So just adding those two, or just modifying those three materials completely altered the fragrance completely, which brings me back to my point that I talked about in the first two or three minutes of this video is don't alter too much when you're making changes in your formula because you won't know what went wrong. So at least in this part, I know what went wrong by adding in, or I added in an additional new material, which was the Rose Ultimate, and I lowered the musk and I upped the pretty oud. So now in this formula, I now lowered the Rose Ultimate, I up the us, I up the musk back up, and I lower the pretty oud. So now, oh shit, that's chocolatey. <laughs> that's good though. The funny thing is, for anybody that's new to formulating or making perfumes in general, you even to people that have been making, like you know off the bat what you smell from the bottle is not what you're gonna smell from the sprayer on your skin. Completely different scents. Like when I smell this, I smell a hell of a lot of chocolate, the musks, a touch of rose. I, I'm really not picking up much rose even though you saw, you saw me add in three rose materials and it's very fresh still, but it's very chocolatey. But I know, once I spray this on skin, it's gonna smell completely different. Like even on my skin versus her skin, when I tested on her skin, they come off different. Like on me, it came off clean. 
uh, <clears throat> on her, it came off a little bit dirtier on her skin. On my skin, I didn't get it as dirty smelling for some reason, same formula. But that's it. I'm gonna let this sit for 24 to 48 hours uh, to let everything kind of meld together and settle in nicely. Uh, I'll bring it to her and have her smell it and get her thoughts on it. So yeah, that was a long video. Uh, hopefully you guys got some sort of insight, uh, maybe even some inspirations um, to you know play with some new materials. And that's pretty much it. That was my long probably, what are we at? Was that a 30 minute video? Jesus, one hour? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cut it short now. So with that being said, until next time.